Yesterday, a mighty body gathered in front of City Hall. 60,000 people, 70,000, who knows, mostly young, testifying to the sacred value of every human life, walking down Market Street in witness to the gift and gospel of life. It was an overwhelming witness to the peace and joy of knowing that there is a God and we are in his hands. We met very little opposition yesterday in this 15th annual Walk for Life. There was one uh, person shouting through a bullhorn, the fetus is not a baby, however, he was shouting that at families strolling past with large photographs of big beautiful babies in the womb, fully formed, we call that in step in 12 step programs uh, denial. It is clear that this gift of new life is beautiful and human. Pope Francis coined the term the throw away culture. We throw away perfectly good food, we throw away usable clothing, cars, electronics. I tried to get my shoes fixed the other day. No, we don't fix shoes, just throw them away, we get some new ones. We too easily give up on marriages that could be repaired and friendships that just need a little loving care. But I think our throwaway culture began in earnest when we began throwing away our children, first through contraception and then through abortion, the inevitable result of a contraceptive mentality. It's a national sadness and a national dysfunction, kind of a national divorce. We all bear it, and that we have given up on what just needs a little more love. The Walk for Life overcomes this pervasive sadness with a kind of joie de vivre, that French saying, the joy of life, because life is joy. Life is joy, the joy of our youth. In the first reading, Ezra the priest reads the books of the law to the Jewish people. Now, the people have lost the law for 40 years. Two generations, they had been deprived of the law, the Torah of life. And going through the ruined temple after they had returned to the destroyed city of Jerusalem, they found some scrolls in a dusty corner. Ezra looks at them and says, these are the words of the Torah, the law of God. So he gathers all the people and reads publicly from the Torah from midday, from daybreak to midday. He sees the people weeping as they hear the words of life. And he says, do not be sad, do not weep, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. This is the strength of youth, the strength of knowing that God the giver of life provides for us. In the Gospel, the Lord himself reads from Isaiah in his Nazareth synagogue where he had grown up, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring glad tidings, to proclaim liberty, recovery of sight, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord. He finished the re reading, he rolls up the scroll and sits down. Today, he says, this prophecy is fulfilled in your hearing. It is in Christ Jesus, God with us, that we are acceptable. Finally, we are favorable to him through the blood of Christ. No matter what we have done, no matter what has been done to us, no matter what bloodshed we have engaged in, no matter what mistakes we have made, this is a year acceptable to the Lord. All of us have in some degree accepted a culture in which parents give up on their children, but each year at this walk for life, we rediscover the joy of the gospel. God can save us. He can save us from the sadness that is so pervasive, the isolation that this mentality has brought to our land. Why is the pro-life movement so young? It's not only filled with children and teens, young adults and young families. It was funny to see how 
these big families negotiated the trolley tracks on Market, on Market Street with their big strollers, some of them with two or three kids. But there's a lot of older people as well, people who have been praying in front of abortion clinics for 30 years, and they are still filled with hope and joy. This hope, this joy is born of a conviction that we are free and we are at peace with nature. Three years ago, a woman from Nigeria testified, she spoke at the Walk for Life speaker event before the walk, saying, I stand here before you as an African woman to say we should never have to buy success with the blood of our babies. The good news is we do not have to choose between a child and a successful life. God gives both to us if we trust him enough to keep his natural laws. Of course, the primary law of nature is that every human being has inalienable rights. In other words, as St. Paul says in today's epistle, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor the hand to the feet, I do not need you. We need each other. Every human life is needed to the whole. It's because we've been dismantling and eliminating an entire part of the human family since 1973 that we feel homeless, disembodied as a culture. Since Roe v. Wade, at least 60 million lives have been thrown away. And I have to say, if you or I do not say something, if we do not do something, their blood is in some measure on our hands. Because the loss of every human life is the loss of humanity, an irreparable loss for the whole race. Oskar Schindler, a German industrialist whose story was made famous in Spielberg's movie Schindler's List, saved 1,200 Jews from Nazi extermination. But in the end of the movie, and I read the book as well, so this, this really happened that he was struck by this conviction that he had not saved, he had not done everything he could to save as many lives as he could. In the movie, he looks at his big car and he says, how many human lives could that car have purchased? He looks at his golden ring. How many people died because I didn't sell my ring? And he quotes the Jewish proverb, which I think is on his tomb. To save one life is to save the whole world. We need every human life that God gives us. We need each other. And if we go to church every Sunday and practice kindness to those around us, but say nothing and do nothing, as a whole part of our population is being eliminated, then in some measure their blood is on our hands. I was so happy to see so many of us from this parish at the Walk for Life yesterday. A record number, probably about a hundred people gathered under our parish flag, and so many more at the Walk for Life itself, reflecting, as Eva said from the speaker's podium, our big sister in Washington, the Great March for Life, which apparently had some, something upwards of 650,000 people this year, because we know that all of us are needed. The best of the pro-life movement is not motivated by guilt or anger. It is a movement propelled by the joy of youth. On Thursday night, I prayed with some folks at the only Planned Parenthood clinic still operating in San Francisco. Our parish sends people every Thursday night. It was a young adult, Clarice, who led the rosary. But I marveled at an older person there, Dr. Ron Konopowski, a retired dentist who coordinates San Francisco's 40 Days for Life every year. Dr. Ron spends 12 hours every day for six weeks in front of that abortion facility. And he is never sad, and it's marvelous. That he is never frustrated. At least I've never seen him upset 
even though in this city of a million people, very few join him. And in smaller cities, they have no problem in 40 Days for Life keeping people around the clock 24 hours a day in front of abortion clinics. But here we can't do that. And it doesn't frustrate him like it sometimes frustrates me. I've never seen him angry at the sometimes furious disrespect that he endures from passers-by because he's trying to do a good thing to defend human life, to help the women. The other morning on Friday, I was on my way to an early mass at the Missionaries of Charity. It was still dark. I almost ran Ron Konopowski over on my scooter because he was hurrying to Cristo Rey Monastery where he goes to mass every day at 6.30, walking three miles to and from the Carmelite Monastery. What a great way to spend your retirement. What a great way to keep yourself ever young. Walking three miles in the moonlight for holy mass with these holy women. He draws the joy of his youth from the holy mass, from a personal relationship and surrender to the Lord of life. What a privilege it is for all of us to bear the gospel of life through this world. <laughs>